Shah, that was absolutely amazing. It was thought-provoking and inspiring, so thank you so much. Uh, distinguished guests, graduands, colleagues, uh, first of all, I'd like to take this opportunity of offering my warmest congratulations to you. I can only imagine what it must have been like to study through this. I'd also like to thank my team who have made today possible through the ravages and uncertainties caused by the pandemic. At our graduation ceremony each year, the Institute confers its highest academic award, an honorary master's degree on a distinguished member of the financial services community to recognize their contribution to the industry. The notable career of this year's recipient, Ian Stewart, stretches back almost 40 years and has uniquely encompassed senior roles at three of our largest banks. Having left school at 16, Ian went straight into banking, into the only job that was available at banking, working as a cashier in a branch in his native Glasgow, before moving into business banking later. He held a number of roles within business banking during his 22 years at NatWest before joining Barclays, where he was head of corporate banking for six years. He left Barclays in 2014 to take a broader corporate role at HSBC and was appointed to his current role in 2017 as chief executive of HSBC UK Bank. And he is also a member of HSBC's executive committee. Whilst working, Ian found the time to study, both at night school and then at the University of Reading, where he obtained a management diploma. And he maintains a very strong commitment to education and professional development, both for himself and, more importantly, for others. As a leader, he has promoted equality and diversity within HSBC and has a very strong innate sense of fairness. This applies to his colleagues within the bank and also to the bank's customers. He is an exemplar of the new generation of bank leaders who have done so much to repair the damage caused by banks and other financial institutions in the lead up to the financial crisis and he has a deep appreciation of the vital role that banks play in building a sustainable society, and in particular, to supporting those who are socially and financially excluded. Because when we talk about financial inclusion, we often think that the issue is confined to underdeveloped countries in Africa and Asia, or to countries with vast rural populations like China and India. But problems exist here too, and the pandemic has only served to increase the vulnerability of those who do not have access to basic financial services. Ian has done much to encourage social and financial inclusion, and under his leadership, HSBC have created services which are specifically aimed at those experiencing hardship, specifically aimed at people facing difficult moments in their lives, providing access to financial services to the homeless and to the victims of human trafficking. Just as education instills confidence in those who receive it, and helps them achieve their career goals and aspirations. So removing barriers to financial services helps build confidence of those who receive the benefit, gives them a great, greater sense of stability and belonging. Ian has been a great supporter of different educational, youth and healthcare charities throughout his career and he served as a trustee of this institute for a number of years and has always given us the freely of his time to support our educational work and to provide very helpful advice. I read an article the other day, 
one of the many hundreds that appears talking about leadership in the pandemic and the qualities needed to succeed. And most of them talk about adaptability, flexibility, resilience. But I saw one and it highlighted two, which made me think of the recipient of this award, passion and compassion. Ian's passion for what he does shines through, as does his compassion for those within HSBC and beyond. It's now my enormous pleasure to invite our chairman, Professor Stephen Haberman, to make the presentation of a master's degree in banking and finance, honoris causa, to Ian Stewart. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon. I feel incredibly privileged and indeed humbled to be presented with this honorary master's degree. I would like to thank everyone at the London Institute of Banking and Finance for bestowing this honor on me. I've worked in different ways with the Institute for many years, and their work in ensuring the UK remains one of the most respected if not the most respected, banking nations on the planet today is testament to the quality of their work and the amount of students who have benefited from the many programmes available. I would like to pay respect to all the tutors over many years who have delivered to the very highest standard. I also respect the way the Institute have developed their programmes, especially since the global financial crisis. And today you can see how important conduct is to the work that the Institute produced throughout their curriculum. If I could get personal just for a minute and explain why this degree is such an honour, perhaps I could just take a moment to share my back story. I did indeed leave school on my 16th birthday. It seems an awful long time ago. It was the 21st of September 1979. Many of you were not even born on the 21st of September 1979. And without boring you, university was never an option for me. So two weeks later, starting on the 2nd of October 1979, I started my banking career with the Bank of Scotland in a tiny little village called Dunkeld with only five people. So my journey to, through banking is a little bit unconventional. I finally joined university life in a postgraduate capacity in 1998 to obtain a diploma in management through evening classes. And evening classes has indeed been my friend for many years, not least when I left school and was quick to realize that I needed more qualifications to progress. The diploma arrived a full 20 years later, but a proud day nonetheless. And Alex has said, you know, I'd just like to thank the University of Reading for seeing me through. I can assure you that evening classes are never the ideal way to gain qualifications, especially when you're balancing a demanding full-time job and a growing family. I tell children at school today, work hard now. It takes the pressure off in years to come. One privilege which I have had in life is to be brought up and live in the UK with the ability to access world-class education, not only in my early years, but throughout my working life. Many countries can only dream of the facilities we have here in the UK. We really do have higher education providers that are respected around the world with highly regarded standards and renowned experts in key academic areas. I've also been very fortunate to work for four employers who all encouraged self-development and invested heavily in aspiring talent. This allowed me to gain access 
to exciting and cutting-edge learning and development, for which I will always be grateful. I am indeed extremely passionate about learning and continue to see education as a friend. Even after more than four decades in banking, I still continue to try and educate myself and learn new skills that the current environment demands. Reading remains a passion, if only there was more time to indulge. As well as continuing to self-learn, I understand the important role organisations play in investing in their people and playing a wider part in society. None more so than the work I do for Speakers for Schools. It is so challenging for inner city schools to embed that education is one of the world's great advancement tools. And indeed, I would go as far as to say a multiplier in your chances to succeed. As Mohammed said earlier, education, it really is a global enabler. At HSBC UK today, we believe every young person should have the chance to develop their skills and realise their true potential. I am proud to work with several key partners, including the Prince's Trust and Young Money, to make an impact through programmes in future skills, employability and financial education, reaching young people from three-year-old through to young adulthood. Within HSBC, investing in future skills is a key priority, and I am fully committed to not only equipping colleagues to do their roles effectively, but also help them achieve their future career aspirations. My passion for education will continue, and I hope inspire others that you can achieve whatever you put your mind to at any stage of life. Now, before closing, it would be remiss of me not to thank my wife, Gillian, who's here with me today, and indeed my four children, for all the support they've afforded me over the years. Gillian has seen it all, the good and the bad. We met at school, and it's not always been easy, so thank you so much for your continued support. We both know I would not have made it on my own. There are many others I could and should thank, but too many to say thank you today. What I would say, you're good friends, you know who you are, and thank you so much for supporting me through the journey. To everyone else here today, many congratulations. You will make your parents proud. Congratulations also on your accomplishments. I wish you every success in the future. I would underline, banking is a great industry. Please look after it. If you look after it, it will look after you. And finally, many thanks to Alex Fraser and all the team at the London Institute of Banking and Finance. You do an incredible job for the industry, and long may that continue. Thank you very much. Thank you.